All right, let's have um, a buoyancy example here. So it'll be a little tricky maybe. What we're gonna have is a cylinder of some kind. We know it's radius R, we know it's height H, and we know the density of the material rho. We're gonna drop it into some liquid and it's going to float upright, okay? So if it floats upright in this liquid whose density we know, density of the liquid, rho L, uh, the question is how far will it sink here? So that, that is the idea. Uh, let me name the height of the cylinder, capital H. And I'm gonna name this lowercase h. So we're looking for this lowercase h how far the cylinder is going to sink into the liquid. Okay, so it is a buoyancy problem. We know if it floats, then that must mean it's not accelerating up or down, right? And if I make this into a free body diagram, that, must, that means I've got force of buoyancy holding it up, force of gravity pulling it down, and if it's not accelerating up or down, the sum of the forces in that direction will equal zero. It'll equal ma, but it'll equal zero. And I'm going to say up is the positive direction. So zero equals, now we list out the forces, right? The force of buoyancy minus the force of gravity. So just looking at this part here, zero equals force of buoyancy minus force of gravity. Rearrange that, we get that the force of buoyancy must equal the force of gravity. Right, so just like if we were finding the tension in a rope or something, it's the exact same process we would take. So I've got here that the force of buoyancy equals the force of gravity. Fine. Um, but uh, we got to start defining these things a little. After all, I'm looking for the height, how far, it, or the depth, rather, how far it will sink. So let's define these things. The force of buoyancy is going to be the uh, density of the liquid times the volume of liquid displaced times gravity. And the force of gravity is the mass of the object times gravity, of course, just mg. Um, but remember what uh, what we know. We only know the density of the liquid. We know the height, the density of the object, and these cylinders radius. So those four things. So I don't know the volume of liquid displaced, and I don't even know the mass of the object. Uh, luckily, just by definition, density is equal to mass over volume, right? Or in other words, mass is equal to volume times density if I rearrange it. So if I can figure out the volume of this thing, then we're good. And I can. The volume of a cylinder is the area of the top times the height. And the area of the circle is pi r squared. So the volume of the cylinder, which I'll just call v, is, uh, let's see, so it's pi r squared times h. Okay, so that's the top area times the height, gives us the volume. That's the volume of the cylinder. Not to be confused with the volume of water displaced, which is this amount. Okay, that's the volume that's displacing water. But the entire volume is pi r squared h. So for the sake of the mass of the object, it's going to be equal to, well, volume times density. So pi r squared h times the density of the object. So this is the mass of the object. Okay, now I can put that there. So the mass of the liquid times the volume of the liquid times gravity equals pi r squared h rho g. Oh, and I can cancel these g's, right? g on both sides. Okay, well, we're getting somewhere here, but we don't know the volume of liquid displaced. Well, that's also a cylinder, right? I mean, if the water is still like it probably would be, ignore my waves. Um, then that, that is another cylinder, right? And the volume of the liquid displaced is going to be, well, it's got the same top here, the same rate, it's the, you know, it's the object. So the top is pi r squared times little h. That will give us the volume that I've shaded black here. Okay, so I can write that in when I have, where I have the volume of the liquid. Okay, we can get rid of some pi r squareds here. Oh, didn't even need to know the radius. And 
I was looking for little h, right? So little h will equal, if I divide over, it'll equal the total height of the object times the ratio of the density of the object to the density of the liquid. We're looking, having trouble with my rows here. I don't have to do. Okay. So the main takeaway from this one probably is to be careful in the force of about the force of buoyancy. The force of buoyancy contains a uh, volume of the liquid here, right? But that is not necessarily the volume of the object. Only if the object is fully submerged is it displacing that much. In this case, we have it only partially submerged, and so this is the volume of liquid displaced, or in other words, the volume of the object that is submerged. All right, so um, you might want to go over this one a couple times just to make sure you get it, um, but that's about it.